Hello again, I am Blunty, and this, well, this is the Seagate Firecuda 530, and oh, oh, it's fast. It's so fast. So, for those of you who've been around here for a little while now, you know, I like the Seagate drives. I like other companies' drives as well, but I've used a lot of Seagate drives, and they've been extremely reliable, so I tend to lean on them when I'm looking for something myself. I've used these in a lot of my builds, but, well, not this, this is new. But I've used Seagate drives in general in a lot of my builds. Uh, I've got a couple more drives from Seagate that is, uh, for an upcoming video. You don't want to miss that. Those are monstrous things as well. So please do the thumb where you subscribe and thumb and then comment and things like that. So you make sure you see my videos and YouTube algorithm and blah, blah, blah. So some of the Seagate drives I've used, I've just purchased for myself with my money. Some I've had sent in for review samples and some by request when I'm doing a specific build. This this is a sponsored video, just so we're all up front about exactly what's going on here. And this specific drive, the Firecode 530, I'm not kidding. It is seriously fast, agonizingly fast, brutally fast, catastrophically fast. I love saying that word. Have you noticed how often I say it in videos? Catastrophic. This is the drive you want for absolute peak performance. If you are a serious enthusiast PC gamer, or you do a lot with a lot of data, say for example, you're a content creator moving a lot of data around really quickly, maybe some extremely high bitrate videos, for example. Uh, this is this is the Giga Chad of M.2 drives. If I can just a little, do a little meme for you. Am I memeing right, kids? I know I've got the gray hair and stuff, but you know, my generation invented memes. Am I doing the Giga Chad right? It is rated at seven gigabits per second using the PCIe 4.0 interface. Oh, and fun fact, I'll show you this in a little bit, but I actually got consistent benchmarks well above this read speed. But before we dive deeper on the drive itself, let's have a little talk about Windows 11 and how important this drive is going to be for Windows 11 and gaming on Windows 11. Windows 11 is coming real soon. It's got a few things gamers will enjoy, chief among them, something called direct storage. And a version of this will be backported to Windows 10 as well, if you're not ready or willing to upgrade yet. For those not in the know, direct storage will allow streamlining of how game data in particular gets processed, using to the fullest advantage the brutally fast bandwidth of drives like the Firecuda here. The direct storage API will let developers have their games massively reduce load times and make things like open world games run very, very smoothly indeed. And it does this by just kind of circumventing the CPU. In most regular games, what happens is, you know, there's data on the drive. The game wants that data uh, sent to the GPU so it can do things with it, like make pretty pictures. Uh, so it sends a command, you know, from the, from the CPU down to the drive, say, hey, we need this data. And the drive goes, okay, here's the data, sends it back to the CPU and the CPU goes, all right, yep, that's the data we needed. Off to the GPU you go and do things. Well, direct storage just uh, lets the GPU talk directly to the storage. So the CPU gets left out of the loop, which reduces latency and, and timing issues and things like that. So I can just, the GPU can suck the data it needs right from the drive, right across the PCI interface, easy peasy. That also has the side benefit of leaving the CPU alone to do other things in the meantime. So instead of doing that, that middleman talky chat, it can just spend more time doing other things in the game, like, you know, physics and, and whatnot. So it's not just the performance boost you get from, you know, not having the data have to squirt through a middleman, but also what the middleman can do in the time it used to do, doing that sort of stuff. In any case, it's very clever stuff, and gamers are actually already benefiting from this kind of technology. The PS5 does it, and they made a big deal about it before launch, about how, how smart this thing was. And yes, the Xbox Series X can do it as well. Unfortunately, Windows 11 and direct storage with it are, are still not quite here at the time of this recording, so I can't demo it for you, but I did want to point out that it's going to be a huge beneficial thing to have very, very fast drives in your gaming rig. But even without that feature active yet, there are still all the other usual benefits you get from having a very, very fast drive. Now on paper, the PCA Gen 4x4 interface absolutely maxes out at a little past the 7,000 megabits per second that this is rated at, but given normal operating overheads for all practical purposes in the real world, you can consider this pretty much as screamingly fast as you'll be able to get right now. Seagate even hooked me up with the biggest version they have, fully four, big fat terabytes of space. They also come in a more uh, moderate 500 gigabyte model, a one terabyte model and a two terabyte flavor, of course, as well. There's even a model with a heatsink if you need that. And the heatsink is even designed by some of the best in the business, EKWB. But my gaming rig has a motherboard with a built-in heat spreader and active cooling fan, so I won't be needing that one. 
Now, to put this rated speed in perspective, the 7000 megabits per second is basically twice as fast as an M.2 drive on PCIe Gen 3 NVMe, so what most enthusiast gamers are running currently. And it's a nearly comical 12 times faster than a nice 2.5 inch SSD on SATA 3 interface, which seems quaint and old fashioned by today's standards. Still pretty fast, but... So that's the on-paper speed. How about the on-paper durability? Well, it's tested and rated for a 70% fill of the full drive capacity every day for five years, which is huge. That means you can fill and delete 70% of the drive every single day of the drive's life for five years. No one's gonna be doing that, so you can probably expect slightly more than five years service out of the thing. How about this number? 1.8 million hours mean time between failures. That is a number so absurd, I can't even conceptualize it for you. 1.8 million hours mean time between failure. That's a lot of hours. So I'm not really worried about reliability or longevity. And even if, you know, the worst case scenario happens, Seagate do also have their data rescue service thingy bob for you there. That's not the official title. It's called that. Thingy Bob was my addition. So, words, numbers, facts, figures on paper. Let's actually test the damn thing, shall we? Look at these numbers. I ran this classic benchmark several times and the numbers are consistent, beautifully so, in fact. Of course, in the real world, these things do tend to flatter a bit depending on system overhead, but to say these numbers obliterate the drive I had in there before it, well, well, you know what? I was going to say it was an understatement, but no, I think obliterate is a nice word for it. Well, figuratively, at least. Also, for comparison's sake, the quaint little SATA 3 drive. Aw, aw, look at it try. <laughs> so this, of course, is Rise of the Tomb Raider. A few years old now, of course, but I'm using it here because I've used it before in exactly the same way as a very reliable and very repeatable test for the difference drive speed makes to load time and fast travel. In the past, I've compared SATA 3 and PCIe 3.0 M.2 drives, and the differences there is, well, it's pretty wide, as the test you just saw would have shown. Though here, I'm comparing PCIe 3.0 versus PCIe 4.0 M.2 drives. The difference will be much more subtle, not quite as pronounced, but even here, in a game launched before PCIe 4.0 even existed, you'll still notice the difference, and it will stack up on you. In the games coming forward, now that PCIe 4.0 speeds are becoming much more common, and even the consoles have comparable drive speeds, these kinds of differences will only multiply, especially once you stack on top of all that the Windows 11 features we spoke about and the developers further optimizing games to take advantage of these new fast drives. And that is why I'm so excited about the Firecuda 530. It's drives like this that are the leading edge. We are revving towards that red line and enthusiast PC gamers are, well, they're all about that min-max life, eh? So, once more, thank you again for Seagate for sponsoring this video and to the rest of you out there. Uh, I only take sponsorships and, and recommend products that I personally, you know, have used and would trust and would use myself. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm more than happy to tell a brand to bugger off if it's some piece of crap, even though I could really use the money. And to further that fact, this thing is now my primary game install drive on my main gaming rig. Uh, so I am personally continuing to use this because it eclipses what I had in there before by a very wide margin. And that was a pretty fast drive to begin with. The performance is undeniable. It's a brand I personally trust. And I'm standing by all of that by making it my own personal daily driver. What more could you ask for recommendation wise? Daily driver, because it's a drive. Unintended pun. Does it count if you have to point it out? So thanks again to Seagate and congratulations on their engineers. You did a tip top job there to the rest of you. Thank you for watching this video and making it to the end. And a special thank you, of course, to the patrons scrolling up above, whose above and beyond support is wonderful. Thank you so much for that. I am Blunty. Thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.